All right, we are on. Hello. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. So my thought is that Senna's not allowed to pick books anymore. And I told you, Robin, that I didn't pick this. We all picked yeah. this. It's, it's all of our faults. This was a group decision. Group effort. Nah, I think it's the nominating crew whose decision on that part. Well, hey, look, I mean, if you had presented some viable alternatives. <laughs> I think they just like torturing us. That's what I think. That's why they pick your books. I mean, that is, that is entirely probable. Well, let's let's just realize that our audience is a lot like us. Yes. So, <laughs> they go, oh, God, that sounds horrible. That's going to be fantastically horrible. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, when I started this, I was, I was pretty excited. Even, you thought you'd you know, gotten around the princess thing. I, I did, and I also thought it would be shit, but in a fairly benign way. Uh, I was just surprised on all accounts. <laughs> you know. Uh, but anyway, so we are here to talk about the last five chapters? Yeah, it really wasn't a lot. It wasn't. And yet, mm -hmm. and yet how awful they were. <laughs> uh, lots of, lots of shit happening. A lot of it, and I'm mixed on some of it, on how I feel about it, and other things I absolutely hated. Okay. Well, why don't you start, Robin, since you mm -hmm. are obviously impassioned. And I also know that there's a thing Robin hates that I was like, yep. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so do we want to actually do a how the book ends, or do we want to say, hey, that's spoilers, and we're not going to do that? Because no, we don't I mean, seem to do very good at that anyway. So. I feel uh, like if they've gotten this far, yeah. <laughs> they probably also already know how it ends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, um, so I totally called the queen killing the king. I totally called yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I was glad to see that I wasn't wrong about that. <laughs> I was honestly surprised that they did kill the king this time. I was too. I was a little bit. I was a little bit surprised as well. Um, I'm s glad and a little surprised that they actually did the whole. Um, I don't love you enough to betray my kingdom. I was very happy. Oh to my see god! That. I know. I was there very were happy. A, there were a couple times where it was like, "Hey, you." You should have just kept doing things like this. Yes. Like the whole, uh, no, I'm not betraying my kingdom. <laughs> and then her being like, you know what? I don't love either of you. No I, one. I feel like that, though, was undermined by the fact that she obviously loves Cal. <laughs> yes. Uh, and I mean, has feels for Maven. Right, so we're I, we were obviously on the train to to like OTP town with Cal and and uh, Mare. Now that Maven is out of the way, right now it's going to be Kalorn and yes, and Cal. yes, that is literally the only reason he's still around is so that yeah. he can be a competing love interest in book two. Because all the boys love her. <laughs> so I was at least glad to see those two things. Everything else I have issues with. <laughs> I, those two I was really kind of glad to see happen I'm like yes he doesn't choose the kingdom over her he chooses the kingdom over her we don't have one of those love conquers all kind of bullshit stuff um, and then the, key, the queen actually kills the king um, I think I like the idea better of Maven doing all this because he disagrees with how the kingdom's being run, instead of I'm jealous of my brother. I like yeah, that no, idea God. better. Yeah, he went very uh, out of character. Like, Dude, right? Yeah. It was just there the were... instant that they revealed that he was a bad guy. It was just, he just went paper flat. Oh, yeah. Like, and he became lazy and sniveling and all that and bullshit. Cowardly. Yeah. yeah. 
they made a big point of him being a coward. Like, that was a big thing. Because Cal, even though he is wrong, you know, politically wrong, we all agree on that, including yeah. Matt, he is a soldier, and he is brave, and he's, you know, he has morals because he didn't kill that guy. I, I loved how it went from, huh, he's a soldier, of course, yeah. Yeah. to... He's a soldier. <laughs> You've got to respect it, man. He won't <laughs> change his morals. <laughs> yeah. Um, she does, She does like, a, she's a fucking top with as many 180s as she does for yeah. these guys. Indeed. 180s or 360s? 180s, just back, and you know what? She just, <laughs> she keeps going. Nip. She racks them up. Um... I particularly liked how, especially with Maven, uh, towards, like, every single con confrontational scene that she had with Maven where she was, like, alternately yelling at him and crying, and he would alternately be like, I hate you, I'm just a dick, and then he would be like, but I still love you. Mm, you could have been like, my red queen. <laughs> with the snap of a finger, like, between yeah. one sentence and the next, he would oh, just yeah. be well, doing you know, different things. As soon as I read... I can save you. I can uh, save you. Yeah. As soon as I read that, I go, Lori, this book sucks! <laughs> Why no, am I reading this? It didn't make any sense because he very, like... Okay, so they gave us a reason on why Mare had not just been killed because she was going to give out that decree. It's mm -hmm. sort of a reason. It's any reason at all, which is like, all right, well, you gave us something. Uh, D for effort. But then <laughs> he... She's like, help me out of this. And he's like, no, I don't think so. I was like, you could have just kept using her. Yeah. What, what do you get out of this? Kill her later. Something. Like, this is stupid. Especially when, like, the next day he's like, I can save you. Yeah. Why don't you love me? I choose him. <laughs> you walked away, buddy. Like, yeah made zero sense. Yeah, and it's just, like, his constant, like, emotional state changing, or his motivation, even, just keeps changing. changing. Like, the way that we're supposed to perceive him. He... It would have been one thing if it was really apparent his mother was using him, mm -hmm. or if he was using his mother, or if it was just... If there was more coherence to it, it just mm -hmm. it never felt like the two of them were actually on the same page, the Queen and Maven. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought it would be more of a co, uh, like, a co, you know, they were doing it together, but right. you Cody see, Pierce. like, yeah, you see her kind of, you know, like, she was obviously in on it, and she she's the one who forces Cal to kill the king, so she's there, but then the rest of the time it's just Maven being, like, a whiny douche. yeah. It's she like, doesn't dude, really. She doesn't really get her like villain monologuing moment. <laughs> she doesn't yeah. even really show up in the the arena. We see her briefly while they're introducing how they're gonna kill everyone, and then she just disappears. Even when the arena is empty, instead of the mother being there, it's just the it's just Maven. Yeah, it, there's no That's consistency a good point. in that. I hadn't even like rec like realized that part, mm -hmm. but it's it's true. It's actually really when you pointed out, is glaringly uh, omitting her. Where it's like, she's been the antagonist this whole time, mm -hmm. is revealed to be an enemy mm -hmm. for real in that way. Uh, and But, oh, no, Maven, he's clearly the worst guy. And the... Oh, oh God. <laughs> yeah. Fucking um, Evangeline. Uh, I had another issue with the theater thing, where they sneak <gasps> off in the uh, theater. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did you notice that she didn't know what a play was, but she knew what a cafe was? Yeah. She also seemed to know what a movie was, but not a play. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> like, yeah. Her her knowledge of things is just like it seems like they wanted her to be pretty casual about like 
knowing what stuff was in terms of like, oh, this is the future, so they used to have that, and I know yeah. about it. But then they also want her to be like the poor girl who doesn't understand what rich people do. So she's also like, what's a play? What's oh, a play? you just sit here and look at people act stuff out? Oh, that's Weird. almost like a parallel for what's going on in the story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the, the, the rebels... Yep. Call, basically send them a note going, hey, this is where we're going to meet. So they yeah. go and meet them. Once they get to the rebel base, they really have nothing to say. It's Mayor giving out the plan. It's not them telling them what the plan is and arguing over it. It's Mayor doing all the work. So what was the point in inviting them over unless they could read her mind and go, oh, she's got a plan. But she didn't have a plan at the time. No, she didn't even have that at the time, but it was her plan that they decided to go off of. It wasn't the rebels. It wasn't yeah. Farley who had the plan and was contacting them to let them know. Also, I would just off. I would just like to throw it out there. They agreed to a coup awfully fast. I yeah. feel like this is the sort of thing that more planning needs to go into and that's as where... opposed to, like, I'll just, you know, we can just do this because I say we can. And that's exactly where I wish that they had shown Maven having the same abilities as his mother. Mm. For him to be like, I took a little bit of twisting to convince you, but slowly but surely, every time you touched me, etc., etc. Like, I, I feel like that would be almost, I mean, that would be more explanation, but then it would also be like, oh, you made all these stupid decisions because I have this power. That's what we're going with. <laughs> nah. Fair. She made the decisions oh. on her own. Yeah, I... Uh, there was actually uh, an issue of taking uh, responsibility versus claiming that it was other people's fault or that they deserved things throughout this book. Especially mm -hmm. towards the end of it. There was like, I made him choose. Oh my god, I hated that. She kept apologizing to him, and I'm like, did you forget that he's the prince of the kingdom that is sending your people to war? Right. But then, no, you don't apologize to him. No. And she kept doing it. She kept apologizing to both of them, even after they, like, mutually betrayed each other. She oh, and like, then he's like, <laughs> how does it feel to be used, Mare? like, what? Excuse me? Uh, that's all that's been happening to me is being used. That's Thank why you very I'm much, Dick. Still alive. Yeah. Oh my god. Why was it every time she touched Maven he felt like a corpse? That was weird. Oh, because he was cold because when he's hot he's happy? I don't know. He's got mood skin? <laughs> yes. You notice in the end um, that he was he was giving her like his aura of warmth, and that's how she knew they were still bros or whatever. Mm. <laughs> they were bros in their mutual hatred of his brother. So ridiculous. Yeah, but you notice right as uh, the queen's about to kill the king, uh, she she has that thought. Oh, she has the same exact eyes as him, and I'm like, really. You're just now noticing this. Unless you're going to tell me he has her powers, this is not relevant. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to be looking that closely at someone's eyes when she's trying to murder someone. Unless it's something like later on, but it's just, there's no payoff in this book and therefore it doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 Um, was there anything else we wanted to discuss except for the very ending? Well, all right, so... I want to save that, that for last. Yeah, let's save the ending for the end. The horrible, horrible, <laughs> stupid-ass end. <laughs> oh, my God, fucking... We'll get there. All right. Um, <laughs> so, I'm just going to look over my notes. I would see. just like to currently throw out there that I was kind of ambivalent about this last chunk. Like, I was actually enjoying it a lot more than I enjoyed the rest of the book. Mostly because there weren't bitches. Stuff was happening? Know? Also oh, that. Been, yeah, there for a while. Yeah, there was less bitches and less bitches. stuff Fewer was bitches. happening. But, you know, even during the execution scene. Yeah, I know. The, the um, evangelist. We'll get there. It's the end. It's the end. It's the end. No, wait. We're, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to the end. 
don't okay. know. That's not the end I was talking about, but okay. There's two ends, but it's okay. Yeah. There's like four ends. Thank you. All right, everyone. so it goes full Lord of the Rings on us. Yeah. And this is only the first book. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason I knew it was not the end because it was because it didn't say epilogue, and we had discussed that there was an epilogue in the first book. Why is there an epilogue? <laughs> Oh my god. Alright, so so one of the things that, like, the first thing in the chapter 24 that pissed me off, beyond all of the little <laughs> things I underlined, was that they seriously went full Underground Railroad on this. I know. The real railroad. I was like, are you shitting me? You're, like, you're using the goddamn subway cars as an Underground Railroad to freedom. Yep. <laughs> How many black people are in this book? How many Asian people are in this book? Uh, Any seems... other people of color? No, just the no. two. Yeah. yeah. So that was great. Uh, and then Farley was all like madly smiling and just like... Oh yeah, she was really, really proud of herself. I know, and it's like, dude, who fucking cares? Why are you saying all of this shit? Like, and she just flip-flops where she goes from, like, these mad smiles to, like, growling uh, about, there's no time to get cute. And it's like, she felt really, really inconsistent. Yeah. Where, it, go ahead. Um, it's just one of those things, like, when you're when you're writing something, you like, I envision them saying this thing this way, and I envision them saying this other thing this way, and it doesn't matter if those are two completely different <laughs> moods. <laughs> right. You do it. Yeah, I mean, like, ah, you are very rapid cycling right now, honey, aren't you? <laughs> Lovely. Uh, and then how she's telling the prince all of this information, and I'm like, dude, oh. if you were the leader of the fucking, uh, the Scarlet Guard here, and you're bringing a crown, well, not a crown prince, but you're bringing a prince mm -hmm. into your city, like, dude, you don't bring them full into the heart. I'm I'm going to bet that it's just, like, one of the cities, and that they were okay with that city being just, like, known about, but mm -hmm. that's still people's lives. People lived there. Yeah, and... It, the, but letting the prince know that, hey, the radiation equipment's actually faulty, uh, yeah, that's really smart. Uh, By the way, Seriously. we were full-on District 13 with that. Right. Like the whole oh it's it's irradiated, nobody lives there anymore and then <laughs> people totally live there. Yeah. It's like, like this is this was just district thirteen in your, your Hunger Games fanfic before you filed <laughs> the fucking serial numbers off. Oh my god. Um, you know that's gonna be a thing someday. <laughs> um <laughs> but um, oh, yeah, as soon as, as soon as she showed Maven the list of all of the different, like, uh -huh. the different people with powers, I was like, this is it, she's handing him over this vital information, this is where our conflict is going to come from, you immediately know that he's definitely going to be a bad guy. Yeah, especially since there were two times before then that she was like, I should show Maven, mm -hmm. oh, I'm distracted. <laughs> My cow. <laughs> and other shit. And like, oh. why? The whole idea of, oh, he knows the list. There's no way he memorized it. Mm -hmm. There's no way he had enough of a look to even catch names. He like, might have read enough to read about how to find them. Right, but that's about it. Yeah. He's, he's gonna have a delay. Yeah. Um, then we get over to the whole stupid ass coup plan and where he's like he will always choose you and I just underlined that multiple times with a big <laughs> why and multiple question marks I'm like what <laughs> and and then Kalorn being like after Farley goes you want me to pin my entire operation the entire revolution on some teenage love story I can't believe this and then Kalorn's like I can Eyes never leaving her face. Like, <laughs> she has like four guys around here just staring at her with giant puppy dog eyes, and no right? knows why. And there's like, Kalorn at least makes sense. He's known her for his whole life, and she saved him so many times. And they've, ugh. These prince dudes clearly never hung out with anyone beforehand. 
because they're just like, pretty girl. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's the thing, because they have all of the, uh, all of the, uh, like, the court ladies and stuff, but, but Mare, for yeah. some reason. Yeah. And he, this, he this tells... Little street rat. He tells her that when she, she's talking, she's confronting him about, like, you, you gave me this job, you didn't even know me, and he's like, I could tell that you were different or some shit. Mm. And he's like, why? Because she's spilled her guts to you the first chance she got for no good reason? Like, there's... Apparently that's all it takes. It's so, so, like, just because it has to go this way. Yeah, it's just damsel in distress and bad plotting. What is that awful noise? I thought that was your new year end. No. No noise in my end. Well, it's probably Robin. We'll blame Robin as usual. Yeah. You like yeah. blaming me. Well, yeah, it's you. That's why. Um, anyway. Uh, okay, let's see. Then we're over on to the next chapter, 25, where Evangeline <laughs> is looking proud of herself. For what now? Let's see. She is standing there. It's the when Walsh uh, was taken in. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And Evangeline is is looking proud of herself. And then, okay, yes. So they toss Walsh out onto the floor, and. Uh, there's a line that is, I remember the playful, smiling servant who first introduced me to this world. Mm-hmm. And I just was like, I don't. Right, yeah. no, me either. I can't either. Okay, good, it's not just me? No. No. I was like, was she playful and smiling? Because I'm pretty sure we saw her for, like, one scene, and then yeah. they parted ways. Yeah, she did not introduce her to this world. She was not playful and smiling. She was all, you have to get in here and do this. Yeah, I mean, I don't think she was even particularly friendly. No, she was just doing her damn job. <laughs> and I'm mean, hired start. to be a servant, and yeah, yeah, do your job. Yeah, here you go, this is how you do it. Yeah. How about the servant who taught me how to not fuck shit up and ultimately sent me to the place that I got into this whole damn mess? Like... She was talking before about how reds don't have this and that and the other thing, and it just it felt so false and like proof that Mare is an unreliable narrator, except that we have our own memories mm-hmm. <laughs> to uh, counteract what she's saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it was just a matter of like, oh, remember this character, you should feel bad because she's going to die now. Yeah, feel nicely about her. Yeah. Um, I, I imagine that Robin will be uh, remembering this part, especially about the um, the suicide pill. Yeah. And <laughs> You hear Robin, she's like, yeah, yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, how there's this uh, mention of it's a better death than she would get from us. Except for the part that, presuming they use some kind of suicide pill like there is in the current world, that shit just disintegrates your insides, like, all acidically. It's grisly. It doesn't foam in your mouth. It's gross. It, it you, you basically, <laughs> you're swallowing acid. It doesn't foam in your mouth like you have rabies. <laughs> uh, well, Red Queen would disagree with you, Robin. Yeah. yeah, Red Queen, we've already established, hasn't done her research on medical stuff. <laughs> There's also how it's like, people die so fucking quickly on that kind of, like, these things. Where it's like, no. <laughs> this is long and suffering and awful. Yeah, it, it was just a matter of, like, because they have so many resources to keep people alive and healthy, that it had to just be, like, instant death. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, I feel like... For things like that, and maybe it's just because like I don't know a whole lot about that sort of thing, that I can just kind of roll with, it's some fucking future pill, so whatever. <laughs> it sure, we'll go with some fucking future pill on this one. Yeah, I just, you know, so it's, it's not... the only way it makes sense. 
it's not as like obviously inaccurate and something that doesn't change the way like living with a lung does. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> how do they get a hold of suicide pills when they can barely afford to do anything if they're a red? They stole it. From where? Learned it in a dungeon. It's not even mentioned in the book that silvers have something like that until the end, until after she's done the suicide pill. So we, so we don't have a clue that that's even a possibility for her until she actually commits suicide. Right, and then Cal's I was like, not oh, yeah, we all suicide. have those. Yeah. I, I think a more realistic that. suicide would have been, oh, she manages to grab his floor because, you know, these guys are already established idiots, and stab <laughs> herself to death. That would have been a, at least... Well, that would also take a lot longer, though. So Depending she, on where she hit herself, yes. I, I but long enough. I, I suspect that you would. She would probably have been able to last long enough to, like, get a healer. Get a healer, yeah. So I think they just needed a way for her to be just uh, instantly out, yeah. We had to kill someone. It, the continuing feeling of I'm making this shit up as I go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, I think a lot of it can be blamed on what she writes in the acknowledgments. Did you either of you read it? I tried. No, I don't remember it. I read it. <laughs> it explains so much about this book. Mm. Why? She graduates from college and gets a job at, it sounds like a magazine, and the editor there encourages her to write Red Queen. She admits... As soon as the first draft was done, this guy um, gave the magazine, uh, gave the manuscript to a literary agent, and the literary agent said, "Oh yeah, let's sign." Uh, first draft. Okay, but it needed some editing. Is it pretty much needs more than a little editing. <laughs> if I look at it as it's a first draft, then I would still need to turn over this book with all of my notes on it. <laughs> Maybe you can you can send it to the author and just be like, honey, here's some no, things yeah. you can we do. Could just send her the you know the copies of these podcasts that we've been doing. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's unkind, Robin. Yeah, that's that's like baiting troll type stuff. Mm. <laughs> I love how angry Robin is. He so rarely gets angry. Yeah. This is a miserable. You're not allowed to pick books anymore, Senna. I she didn't pick it. <laughs> I, I did not pick it. And also I am not going to abide by that, so you know what? Deal with it. <laughs> Can we all talk about how dumb the title Bowl of Bones is? Yes, Jesus fuck. That sounds stupid even to a small child. An oh. obelisk would have made more sense to me. They didn't need to name it anything. No, it could just be the fucking arena or some shit. Yeah. Hey, I mean, like, I get it. It's opulent, and you only use it for executions, and it's sat empty these past however many years. Which also didn't make a whole lot of sense to me if they were as ruthless and as conniving as they were meant to sound that they hadn't executed anybody in, like, ten years. Yeah. Well, but. none of their kind. They've executed plenty of reds, and they have no right, but not in that. Not in the bowl. Yeah. I guess. It just seems like they're the sort of people who should... I don't really understand the significance of them not having killed one of their own in ten years. It just it doesn't mean anything. Like, Well, all of the, the suddenly there's so many more types of silvers. Like, not only do we have the everyone's individual powers thing, but the different tiers of them. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's just suddenly this whole extra world that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I think that's a running theme with the book. Yeah. Nothing nothing makes sense, as uh, Mariska pointed out. Nothing yes. makes sense. So but anyone can betray anyone. <laughs> right. <laughs> I like how they drilled that into your head. Like, okay, because we didn't suspect that Maven was going to turn code enough. We need yeah. to be constantly reminded that you can't trust anyone, even that guy you super trust. 
I wonder if this is more, like, age-appropriate for 12-year-olds, like the early end of young adult. It's too... Except it, that it's so political. Yeah, and it's too, um... There are too many, like, too many deaths. Like, it's it's too yeah. Game of Thronesy, like, anybody can die kind of deal that it just, it doesn't feel middle grade, you know? Well, well no, not to say middle grade, like... Like, <laughs> like, the, usually young adult starts at about 12. 13, right. yeah. Yeah. Right, but I mean, it to me, it doesn't feel super young. Even even the characters and the the dumb things they do, it just it doesn't feel young. It just feels poorly written or poorly thought out, rather. Yeah, I, I guess that's maybe what it is. Is the the thought doesn't match the story that's trying to be told or the tone that she's going yeah. for. Yeah. For they do so many dumb things for something that's supposed to be super serious and political. I would have liked super serious and political. Me too. That's why I I kind of enjoyed the last half of the book is because it finally got <laughs> around to, to doing shit like that. Yeah. Yep. Um. Also on Walsh, the line about I knew she came from your village. I didn't know that. Did any of you know that? No. Um. I feel like that might have been mentioned at some point, but it's nothing I hung on to. Okay, because if not, then I, maybe there's just a scene missing. Hmm. Or something. Ooh, okay, here's another thing. Uh, when Cal says of Mare that Julian says you're like her, meaning his mother, I was just like, dude, that's gross. It's gross, and why are you trying to endear this dead queen to us? Right, so that she's we can dead. Be, so that we can be upset that... Cal's or Maven's mom killed her? I mean, you've already given us enough reason to supposedly dislike the queen. Why are we harping on this dead mom thing? Yep. <laughs> a peaceful transition from one government to the next. <laughs> That's right. not going to happen. Oh, 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 kids. No. Oh, I mean, children's. It, it makes a little more sense when you consider that Maven was just like, yeah, do this thing, you fucking idiot. <laughs> it's God, you're so easy to manipulate. Yeah. <laughs> um. Um, I'm really glad that there was the payoff on the uh, each of the little eyes clicking off as she walks to Maven's room. That all of the times that she goes down the hall and just turns off things and just starts near her room and click, 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 click. Yeah, that somebody noticed. Yeah, that somebody goes, uh huh. <laughs> I did. Not totally I obvious. Enjoy that as well. The queen's like, "You suck so much. I had you to work I so hard." <laughs> I was giggling. <laughs> that was pretty great. It's like, you think you're pretty slick, huh? Mm -hmm. Not so much. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, here's the thing that I know Robin hated: the earring from Kalorn. Yeah, I don't understand why you were so upset about that, Rob. It's not um, that easy. No, it's not easy, and she just goes, oh, I just popped it in my ear, and there was blood, and oh, well, that's okay. Also, like, infections. Okay, yeah. I'm like, that she has no equipment mm -hmm. to do this, so nothing to jab into her, so she's pushing this thing into her ear with no <laughs> sharp object, no toy gun thing that they use when they actually give you an ear, and when do ears... Not even, like, a knife or a needle them? or something. They always yeah. bleed. They always bleed a little bit. I don't remember mine bleeding, but I got mine done when I was seven. So, yeah, I just like, uh, and how much blood? It was really going to be that much blood, even if it is going to bleed. She said it was just a little bit. She was describing it on her fingers, and I'm like, I'm imagining quite a bit of blood. I'm like, I was thinking just like a drop. That's what it seemed like. It would have been nice to have that specifically, being like, I can see the crimson droplet on my fingers. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you don't just stab that shit in your ear. <laughs> you probably ear. break the back of the earring. It's and a at this point, earring. you've got four earrings. Where are you yeah. going to put that fourth earring I, unless it's going to be high in the cartridge? I did wonder 
I did wonder about that because she does have four earrings, and I'm like, is this another one in the lobe? Like, where are you putting this? <laughs> where are you, you going to put that shit? <laughs> I I imagine I I figure that the rest of them have to be high up because she she's right she couldn't push it through the cartilage that easily no. so this one would have had to go through her her fleshy bits and even then there would have been her whimpering her doing something because she's not even numb it's a future right. earring Robin it's. It comes with its own pre-piercing yeah. ability. Even even like poor Reds can afford the self-piercing earrings. Oh my god. <laughs> so there were five thousand soldiers, and I don't believe that. No, I don't. If there were five thousand soldiers, any fucking sane person would have said no to a coup. Uh huh. One. It's, Go ahead. It just... Why are there so many silvers? Like, I think I would have believed this world a whole lot more if there were only 5,000 silvers. Mm -hmm. Rather yeah. than just 5,000 soldiers sitting in my goddamn pocket. Right, in this one particular place. Yeah. Yeah, that, that did seem a lot, especially when you're trying to sell us on the idea that your ragtag band of misfits can successfully pull off a coup. Mm -hmm. and you're, you're telling me there are 5,000 people with superpowers just hanging around the <laughs> castle? Let alone their weapons. Right, and that's just the guards. That's not counting the actual people who live there who also have superpowers. Oh, right, because that was just, like, Cal's unit or something. I think Cal had a smaller unit. I think his was only, like, a thousand, right? Oh, only. Well, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, there were there were too many. It was so, like, you. I guess you have to have this conflict right now. So mm. you're just going to have your, your rebellion leaders run into this shit. Yep, because we gotta get going. Cause it's the end of the book. Hurry up! Right, exactly. We've we've already used the the climax of the the ball right in the yeah. middle. So now we gotta find something else. Okay, I guess it'll be a coup. All right, let's go, guys. I'm it, making it up as I go. The prince says. The prince says that Cal will come through. I guess we just gotta believe him. I I believe that he'll love me. Look at me. I'm fabulous. I know, God, she's, like, she spent the whole book being, like, in vague denial about that, because that's, you know, how YA books go, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden she's like, oh no, he totally loves me enough to fucking abandon all of his kingdom, even after he's told me that he won't. Yeah. But no. no. Okay, whatever you say, Kate. What was the next chapter or next scene that happened? Um... So then they plan it. They plan it. They go and do it, and Cal's like, "Uh, no." There's that scene right before where she's talking to Cal, and she's trying to go for. Well, there's possibilities between us, okay. and she's actually saying, "Hell no!" And I'm kind of like, right. "Why would you want to give yourself a couple of hours to do yeah. that? She, Why would you do it a couple more days or weeks?" Right. They mm -hmm. literally give themselves a night. Yeah, they're like, let's do it in the morning, it'll be awesome. Oh my so god. So she gets everyone from all the other towns to do this battle in a couple of hours, even though they said specifically that there were other towns out okay. there with rebellions. Here's my, here's my question. This yes. is the worst plan in the history of the world, right? You want to do yeah. a coup literally tomorrow. I don't, I don't, I can't, I have to plan like, a breakfast a week in advance. You can't just be like, we're doing this shit tomorrow. Are, well, are we're we... going to hinge it on Kel can't control his dick. Right, so here's my question. Are they supposed to be fucking awful? I are they supposed so. to be incompetent and terrible and we're just supposed to understand that and agree well, they, that this is not a good idea? They didn't even know what a coup was. I know. Mayor I know. had to explain it to them, and I don't even know how Mayor knew what a coup was herself because well, she didn't Julian, know what a theater Julian was. Made, Julian made sure she knew. 
Oh yeah, she didn't that's know what Cal. a theater was. To to be fair, Cal did invent the surprise attack, so yeah, they're the motorcycle way, way behind <laughs> when it comes to military tactics. That's why this war is still going on. Mm. I bet they're just like on the fields throwing rocks at each other. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's actually like a comedy when you you actually see them fight because they don't know what the fuck they're doing. Am I doing it right? Ow, I tripped and fell and hurt myself. <laughs> Call I'm a healer. Metal. I'm gonna die. <laughs> you see them, like, staging big attacks, and then they run into the field and nobody's there because the other army showed up, like, a mile down the road. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> this happened again. My entrance was perfect this time. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, obviously, obviously nobody's that bright in this kingdom, but yeah. I, I just, I wonder, because it's such a terrible, terrible decision, like, it, is, is, is this just, like, supposed to make sense in her world, or are we supposed to think that everybody is an idiot? Well, again, Everyone's with the whole, idiot. it feels like maybe, maybe if you're, you know, like, 12, and, and you're yeah. just starting into this dystopian stuff, that maybe this would be... You okay. can suspend your disbelief, you know, but the the tone's not matching it. Yeah. Um, again, also, if Maven had just been like, Ooh, Farley, you told me to leave me. Yeah. And that also didn't make sense to me. She joins the Scarlet Guard before she becomes a princess. Mm -hmm. If I'm remembering right. How would he know that she was part of the Scarlet Guard? Well, I guess it would be her mother. Uh, uh, no, he, she, did, he didn't know to start. She was not part of the Scarlet Guard. She joined the Scarlet Guard when Cal took her out for their date. Yeah. Yeah, but, but still, also, how would she? Know, how would he? How would Maven, Maven know that he um, he, she was part of the Scarlet Guard to mm. manipulate her into doing everything else he, that he said that he was Robin, doing? Robin, he didn't. Yeah, that's what my point is. No, how, no, no. He had, he had manipulated his. Like personal assistant, Red, yeah. to get into it. It just happened to be that she was also getting into it. It was coincidence and stupid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but why? How would he know that she would be able to? Uh, he would be able to manipulate her. Hmm. So now you want to try? What? <laughs> Explaining to her. No, I mean I think. Did you you heard her right? Like there was just a coincidence that they both ended up being in the Scarlet Guard, Rob. Mhm. Mm yeah. But it sounded like the impression I got was that he had been trying to manipulate her from the moment she showed up, and he took advantage on top of that of the Scarlet Guard. How would he know that she would even be of use to him if from the very beginning in that area? Yeah, I'm not entirely clear on how much of the plot was supposed to be Maven and his mother's grand plan, uh, especially given how much of it was basically coincidence. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, that's what's throwing me completely off in that area. Yeah, I don't know. I got nothing for you, Rob. So there's maybe, oh, maybe somebody can explain that to us. Perhaps. So there's also the matter of, uh, I understand that if this was Maven's plan. As soon as he entered the tunnels, he would have been like, yo guys, there's tunnels. But at the moment when we didn't 100% know, and Mare is like, how much blood will stain the tunnels tonight? Mm -hmm. All I could think was, you're literally in town for like a day, and you've already fucked up their whole system. <laughs> there's secret tunnels, there's secret village. You showed up and you just ruined everything for everyone. <laughs> yep. I mean, they, I mean, but to be fair, they also agreed to an overnight coup. I, so, yeah, and that's part of her messing everything up. I think, I think she's kind of like that dude, except instead of turning off people's powers, she turns off people's <laughs> sense of logic and, and reason. Is that like her secret secondary mutation? Yes. Is that she makes people do dumb things? That's why everybody's in love with her, probably. Yeah. Because that's a dumb thing. All right, I, I agree. This is this is all completely intentional. Okay. 
Uh, oh, right, and then the line of, I've turned him into a monster, I forced his hand, I made him choose. <sighs> no, no you didn't. No, you, you did fucking nothing. didn't. Stop trying to make it seem like he's, like, the good guy and you've just put too much... No! Like, this is, again, part of that whole thing where they're trying to make it seem like, um, like, oh, what was I going for? All right. Like, rebellion is something that's unreasonable. Yeah. Because they're, they're like, oh... You you did this. Your your expectation of him being a decent fucking person was just too much. You pushed him over the edge. But they're still wanting us to accept him as a viable love interest. Right? The guy who refused to help her uh, free her fucking people. Like, no. No, he's not a good person. And no, like, it doesn't matter how miserable and depressed he is at the end. Yeah. Or how much, how much you make the other guy more of an asshole. <laughs> the the better of the two evils. What? He's still evil. Yeah. No. They were doing that a lot in YA. Of settling for the the less bad guy. She's been like, between the two evils, and one's <laughs> more evil than the other. They do that a lot in YA. The lesser of two douchebags. <laughs> we should have a podcast about that. <laughs> we can call it the lesser of two douchebags. <laughs> you just want to have an episode titled that, admit it. And that's exactly why. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and, and they go really far out of their way because that whole thing with Cal is supposed to be like a big betrayal, right? When she's like, I love you. This yeah. is, we can do this together. You're going to choose me. And he even kind of fakes her out with his whole, it was you all along. Duh. Yeah. And uh, you're supposed to be like, no, Cal, how could you betray her like that? And but you're you supposed to, well, no, but you're supposed to be, like, mad at him, right? But then Maven has to come along and be the actual bad guy. Yeah. And, you know, you're stuck with Cal again as the, <laughs> the hero. You're thrown back over to him. Yes. So they, like, she had mm. to... She had to double down on just making Maven completely ridiculous. Oh, and he just, he stopped even being a believable character. Yeah, no, he, again, he just instantly turned into a cartoon. Uh-huh. Yep. yep, everything became, there became lazy, and and his jokes, supposedly <sighs> cool jokes. Have True. Like, no, you're just, you're just... Hmm. Sniffling and yeah, asking I mean, in your supposed win. <laughs> Did you guys see a uh, Jupiter ascending? Yes. No. Oh, okay. Well, uh, Robin will get this. Uh, yeah. the 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 older brother, the one who whispers like Voldemort and then starts screaming, like that's mm -hmm. basically what I pictured uh Maven turning into. That's <laughs> That is an apt description. <laughs> that guy, that guy had more dignity than Maven did. It's just, yeah, so uh, yeah, it was it was dumb. It was dumb. Mm -hmm. So, do you guys want to talk about the ending? Uh, no, hold on. Is there anything else we need to uh, hold on? Uh, all right, hold on. Wait, there was a moment when the queen is doing her thing. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, wait. So, do we consider the um, the killing of the king, the e botched execution, and the epilogue to be the end? Because if um, so, I'm ready to talk about the end. If not, I want to talk about killing the king. Well, was it me? Just me, or was it? Did it seem inconsistent again that the guards would always grab the king, protect him, but not worry about Cal? And then when the execution, uh, when the king came about. When they were going to execute the king, um, all the guards were just more than happy to leave him alone in the room. That seemed inconsistent to me, but again, the entire book's inconsistent. Um, I think at that point, they had gotten to a place where the only people who were in the room were people who were loyal to the queen. Yeah. So I don't think that was necessarily a concern. <laughs> 
it would be way too easy for one of the guards to go, huh, you know, it's kind of funny that they didn't want us uh, up there at that time when he just I'm gonna, died. I'm um, going to bet the, the guards who were there were loyal to the queen and knew what was coming. Mm -hmm. I imagine that their guards are told to just fuck off constantly, so... <laughs> You know, um, you you live with the royals. You if they tell you to fuck off, you do. <laughs> you don't do that. Yeah, you go because yeah. they're about to have a conversation that you're not supposed to hear. Yep. Uh, all right. So the queen, when she is talking about, you know, oh, I'm not doing anything, and she's slapping Cal and slapping him again and harder <laughs> and harder, and is calling him the perfect heir, Corianne's son. I just had to put the book down a moment because I was like, really? Is this more fucking girl hate? Just generations of girl hate? <laughs> yep. <laughs> the entire book has come about because, uh, you know, bitches. That bitch stole my man. Bitches. But because was... she married me, because she married him first. But it right, wasn't out for love. It wasn't even necessarily that though, because she obviously didn't care about the king either. It was a matter of her son being king. I think it was just she hated Corianne. Mm. And then now, of course, wanting her son to be king. Yeah, well that she also does say something along the lines of, Well, you were supposed to love your second son, my son. Yeah. But like he did. Yeah. yeah he I, did. I don't. I didn't ever get the feeling that. I mean, he favored Cal, obviously, but he was also his first son. So it's not like you can say, "Hey, first son, you're not going to be king." Second son <laughs> is like that's just that's not how it works. What was the age difference between the two of them? Uh, um, five and let's say I think one was two and one was seven when they were talking about the bowl and bowl. Really? Okay. So I there's think like. So. A five-year difference between them? It's really just the difference between Cal as a man and Maven as a boy on the cusp of manhood. Well, oh, but Maven was supposed to be the same age as Mare, and I thought Cal was, like, 19. Yeah, well, it's inconsistent. Um, <laughs> I think Cal was 18. I'm, I'm trying to find that where they said that on here. But they were talking about the Bowl of Bones... Um, I was four years old the first time I came here. Maven was barely two, so they're two years. Different. Okay, so they're two years apart. Yep. 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 Uh, there's the no such no no look at uh, at a regency either. So yay. Yeah. If there was a regency, I could understand this at home a lot more better. Can we talk what? about Silent Stone? Oh, yeah. You mean Plot Convenience Stone? Uh-huh. And yeah. don't ask me to explain it because I can't and I don't feel like trying. Oh my god, I know. I read that and I fucking laughed. I laughed so hard. I'm like, oh, that's that's literally the author. Yeah. <laughs> just being like, it exists, deal with it. <laughs> Who cares? It just happens. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> GMery, that's why. I was really expecting in those that scene with the whole comment about I can make my own lightning for her to do that in the cell. Because she didn't need to reach for outside lightning. Yeah, that never came back. That whole thing of her being able to make her own lightning yes. was never significant because mm -hmm. she always had access to power. Mm -hmm. In fact, the the climax is her, like, harnessing power that she's, I mean, I guess yeah. she generated the storm, but it, it was still there. I don't know. Uh, she also does that um, whole, we are stronger than reds and silvers both, but I have not seen any proof of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that, was just, that was just something that Julian said. So I guess we're supposed to take that as fact, even though she's basically gotten her ass handed to her every time she's fought. Yep. Every single time. Yeah. There seems to be under the guise that she is inexperienced. Right. Maybe that's what it is. Is if she had the training, she'd be stronger. Yeah, but except they that say. 
except that in the end she like cooks everybody. So and that's justified by saying we're stronger than you. Mm. So I mean you can't you can't have it both ways. Yep. Uh I was really irritated with the list of people that they killed because they knew anything about Mayor. Oh, yeah, her stylist. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Where she's Bizarre. like, they didn't know anything, and it's like, they knew all about the makeup that they had to do to you every goddamn morning. Yeah. And you have to throw in that last Mama. comment about Blonos being an old crow. Oh, my God, I know. And being like, oh, she was annoying and terrible, but she didn't deserve to die. Oh, okay. She's I gotta get that little jab in at the end, though. <laughs> I guess you're a good person now because she didn't deserve to die. Yeah. She just keeps having this kind of I remember everyone so fondly. Oh, and they're dead now. Right? She was such a playful, smiling servant. Oh, she was just annoying. Oh, they didn't know anything. It's like, you're making up excuses. Yeah, and and she I mean, even she admits that she didn't even bother to learn those maids' names. I know! So like, awful. why do you expect us to care when you didn't care? Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah, it was all, like, kind of a, a very blatant ploy to be like, oh, look at all these people who have died. Mm-hmm. They were super mm-hmm. important to the story. Yeah, the only one that I actually felt sorry for was the, the guard she had. Lucas? Yes. Uh, he had to kill him because their love could never be. I was, <laughs> I was just deeply annoyed by that whole thing because there again, she's valuing like Lucas's life and companionship over anybody else. It's uh-huh. like, fuck off. Whoever's in front of her and about to die is the most important person in the world. Yeah. <laughs> there was a wonderful uh, moment about how blah 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 together they've written a tragedy. <laughs> I was just like, yes. This is true. This book is a tragedy. <laughs> Not in the way you mean it. No. <laughs> yeah. All right. I am ready to talk about the arena. Go for it. Go for it. Uh, all right. Well, first I want to talk about a darling that needs to be killed, because when I read it, I was just like, that's got to go. What's I that? I for you. Okay. This started when I fell into the spiral garden, a body made of sparks, and now it ends at the bowl of bones. I'll leave as a corpse. <laughs> and I read that line, and I was like, you're real proud of that one, aren't you? <laughs> Cut it. Oh, it's like, no, we were there, okay? We get it. <laughs> no, she has to explain to you the parallels. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I I am particularly fond of those lines where they just really need to hammer in like the the metaphor or whatever. Yeah. Just like uh, in case you didn't notice. Wham. Themes. <laughs> Theme. Big neon letters. Uh, and then how her pride is getting like my wretched pride, and it's like. What? You've been a silver pretending to be a silver? You've been not a silver for a month now. Yeah. And... Good. Uh, no, no. Uh-huh. I could rant. You go. I want to hear you talk. Um, no, it's just, like, she says her pride, but I, I also have a hard time remembering her pride coming into play before. I mean, I guess Never. when she ref- when she was, like, mandatorily snarky, yeah. To the queen just, and stuff, but that was just like convention. Yeah, it's just snarky teenager yeah. stuffs. So I don't I don't actually remember her having pride particularly. Either. She didn't seem too uh, worried about her pride when uh, the mother started slamming her into a wall. She yeah. just kind of brushed it off and went, Oh well. I mean, if anything, like, because she, she spent most of the last half of the book crying and not looking at people and stuff, like, if, if anything, it was kind of, like, she didn't have any pride. Yeah. She, was, she was very open about being 
upset, which is fine, but then don't say, like, two minutes later, oh, my pride. <laughs> my pride. My damn pride. This wretched pride is getting me in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. No, no I, don't, I don't remember that. Mm-hmm. We get another moment of uh, not explaining things, because there's never time for explanations, like earlier in the book about something in Cal's shirt keeping it from burning. Oh, yeah. It's it's because I don't want it to burn. There, we're done. Yeah. Yep. This is the same way that her, her fucking outfit, like, she wasn't nude when she fell into the pit. Right? And like, wouldn't you have thought to explain this earlier, though, when he was using his stuff every other time? I guess you're just supposed to assume that, like... You know, it, I mean, I would assume that they had created some sort of fireproof fabric because he was a firebender. Right. So. I don't know when the when the bomb went off, what, what they called the bomb. The guard said, "Oh well, bomb's not going to stop Prince." And I was thinking, "Oh, okay, so he's kind of like Hellboy. He can't be affected by fire." <laughs> period. Yeah. That would be great. So that's what my thinking was, and then of course I get the mention of this shirt, and I'm like, "Wait a minute." How is his face protected from the fire when he went through the explosion then? <laughs> yeah, I wasn't I kept being confused because he kept melting shit off himself and I'm like, isn't he burning himself? Right. He has molten metal on his skin, but she never mentions that like injuring him. The metal getting so hot that it burns him right. by itself or the the fire catches his skin when it breaks free. Right, no, he literally melts his handcuffs, and it, yeah. it drips off of him. That mm -hmm. that burns you. Yeah. yeah. It would have been nice not. if there had been an explanation one way or the other. Right. Um, I, are yeah. you Hellboy, or are you not Hellboy? Right. Like, <laughs> all you have to tell us is that he's fireproof. Just, you know, mention it, like, once. That's yeah. it. And we would be like, I don't know how that works, but okay, fine. Here, no, Moving I, can, on. I can accept that he is Hellboy and he is genetically predisposed to not burn because he's a firebender. Fine, whatever. Although fire Maybe he can control can fire enough that it doesn't get to the point where it can hurt him. Right, maybe he's pour got that like... shit down his throat. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, he's fine. Uh... I think, I wonder how much of that is like Maybe in the later books he gets burned. Maybe. And we have to we have to not have said that he can't be burned. True, true. He's got to print Zuko this shit and get a scar. <laughs> yeah. So you can come know. back and take the throne from Princess Azula. <laughs> None of these people are as cool as Azula. God no, Azula's a fucking badass. Uh, I love her. She's crazy. <laughs> so yeah, no, I mean. That's such, like, a weird thing to specifically leave out, I guess, yeah. that it's, like, is there is there a reason for that? I mean, I guess we see the lightning doesn't really affect her, so maybe, maybe we're left to assume too much. I guess. I mean, yeah, okay, so can we talk about the arena now? Yes, do it. Okay, so if I would can. just... I was just like, the one thing that bothered me from the beginning when they got to the arena, and they were like, oh, uh, the professor trainer dude is keeping me from using my power, mm. so I can't help. And the first thing I fucking thought is fucking fireball him. Just that was seriously. my first thought. Just seriously. get rid of him, bam, problem solved. But no. Come on, Cal. You can do that. Right. Like, the first thing you do to even your odds is get rid of the guy who's holding in your other player. Yeah. It's so simple. But he wasn't even really thinking about her is what that proves. Right. E and even though there was that line of, I'll keep them off I'll you, I'll protect, protect you, you as long as I can. And I'm like, really? She betrayed you? Yeah. She, right. she basically told your brother that she thinks that he's the better guy and you are still going to protect her. Right. Because they're you know, because they're in Lerv. <laughs> That's, Secret love. Yeah, that's it. It's it's that whole thing of her trying to be like, Oh, I hate both of you. Uh we're definitely never ever getting back together. But then, you know, never, being ever. like, 
I'm going to protect you, and oh, if only... Maybe he's a good guy after all. If only we could have what we, you know, if only there weren't all this mm. stuff between us. And it's like, there's not going to be this there's stuff. Not, we all know what's going to happen. There's nothing. Stop, you know, stop trying to act like you're having this big empowering moment by telling them both to fuck off. Yep. I mean, it's just a lot of boo-hoo. It is. It's drama. It's just drama to make it so that they're not together. The drums. Which is the most obnoxious type of drama. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, this doesn't make sense. It's just that whole, I hate the artificial, like, keep them apart until the last book. Yeah. It's so irritating. Mm. So, yeah. You 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 have you don't have me here. Abbeyard. No. <laughs> I'm wise to your tricks that are totally not working. <laughs> no one care. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I love that they that that was not the first thing they did, and that she had to play it off like a big. Oh, I'm cornered now. He's right oh, behind no. me. Oh, I guess I'm gonna fucking duck so that he spears them like that wasn't your plan all along. It's like I'm fine I'm glad you finally fucking did that. It took you long enough. <laughs> yeah, it took her forever. Mm-hmm. I mean Cal was getting the snot beat out of him. It's like this could have been over much sooner. Uh, That's what I don't understand. She should have been just out. I mean he has enough wherewithal to watch her to throw that fireball the fire at her. Everyone at the last prep second to keep her alive, but he can't think enough to get the guy who is keeping her from right. being able to use her magic. Okay, yeah. okay. Here's my other thing. Yes. Was it just me, or did they ignore half of the fighters in the in the in the arena so that they could justifiably not just kill them both immediately? Yeah. Yeah, because, it definitely felt like that. There were times where it's like, where's that fucking water, dude? Right. And then, like, half the time, or the majority of the fight was Cal and Evangeline and her brother. And then, like, a, like way later, the strongman comes into it and the, the waterbender. And it's like, oh, and the guy who can turn invisible. And yeah. it's like, you know, if they all just fucking fought together... This, this would immediately be over. But sin of their pride. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Silver and pride. She does say in there, oh, they're going to draw this out to make it a good show. That's why the waterbender's the last one to go forward because he's going to be the one to finish him off. Mm. It, it does specifically say that in the book. but that's fair. the thinnest of justifications. <sighs> yeah. The... I felt like they were each taken out like like chumps. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are not intimidating at all. If if this is what it takes to beat you. Well, even eyes, there goes, oh, just... there's only five of them. He's taken on four before. This shouldn't be too hard. <laughs> right? He's your he's your prince. You don't just send in. That's your first wave. Yeah, yeah, seriously. I mean, I, I assume that once, you know, they weren't, because she seemed really upset when uh, when they were like, oh, we're just going to have the guards shoot you. She's like, no, we won. It's not fair. It's like, this isn't a oh, fight. This is an yeah. execution. I Where underlined that part. <laughs> I was like, no, no, this isn't about winning. <laughs> okay, did anyone else get confused when she goes with them? Um, I grab into my power and I throw them both away, and I'm like, finally. And then she's like, "Well, I can't do that, unfortunately." I'm like, "Wait." <gasps> I had that same moment where I was like, "Are you kidding me? Really, your power comes back? Oh, it was a lie. Why did you even pretend for a moment that you had your power?" Oh yeah, her brief daydream. Yeah, um, I'm like that didn't yeah. do anything for us. I don't, I don't know why that was there either. I guess just to make you seem, make it seem even more hopeless. To, to, to make it clear that no one's actually after her. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Arvin with his laughing and who has the advantage? Mm. Uh, I know, that was just, that was a setup. <laughs> it was just so petty and stupid and... Yeah, that was just so that she could get off a good line as she killed him. Yeah. It's it's so, like, I hate the mandatory snark, 
and I hate when it's so when you have characters say or do things that that's dumb just so that the protag or the protagonist can come back with a one liner. Yeah. It's so obnoxious. Mm-hmm. Like just fucking don't. Yep. <laughs> or come up with a more natural way to do it, but don't like inflict your cleverness on me. Come on. <laughs> Or lack thereof. On me. <laughs> or lack thereof. Yeah, no, I just, I, that's the most obnoxious thing. I hate, I hate poorly written, snarky protagonists. It just, it pisses me off. Hmm. Uh, Evangeline yelling. About you are supposed, supposed to, to be mine. Mine! <laughs> mine. <laughs> well, you know, I was yours. You're the one who's trying to kill me now. I kept hoping up until she showed up that Evangeline would actually turn around and be, yeah, you know, a hero in that area. I would have you been know? totally happy for Evangeline to be like, "There's no way he killed his father." Right. Yeah, I thought I thought very briefly when Evangeline wasn't up by Maven's side that like, oh, is she gonna come back and be like a good guy because you know she's on Cal's side now. No. Nope. Or 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 the fact that the she's all grinning and, and Maven planned on killing her brother in the first place. She finds out, go realizes, go shit. I'm going to go kick their ass. Like it would have been good for her to come down and see Cal while they were in the cells, mm-hmm. and be like, "I want to hear it from you." Like any kind of character development on right. her. No. Beyond bitch. just bitches. Bitch. That's it. I. Yeah. Yeah, I, I felt bad briefly that I gave them that benefit of the doubt. <laughs> yep. like, I, I briefly thought you were going to do something not terrible. I'm sorry mm, for thinking that. I'm glad that she ran away, though. Though I'm also sad because that means she's going to come back. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Also, did you notice how they pegged Evangeline as being the weakest? No. Yeah, Cal just thing. said, Cal said, yeah, Evangeline's the weakest. And I'm like... Yeah. Wow. Like, didn't we just say that she was, like, the strongest woman in the kingdom? Oh, okay. And but all the, all, all the other, but the other four fighters were men. Right. So. Yeah. Exactly. Really. Bitches. Yeah. Yeah. Women, man. man She's the strongest huh? of the girls. It doesn't mean yeah. that she can fight guys. God, mm-hmm. that's stupid. Why do we even have her here to execute right. people? She's gonna She's, die. I know. This isn't the, this isn't the women's league, man. What are you doing here? <laughs> God. Ugh. This book. Yeah, no. Fuck this book, right? Yep. Uh, so I'm pretty sure she kills, like, two people. Oh, yeah. No, she straight up murders... Uh, she kills a strong man, and then she kills the... The waterbender. The waterbender. And she, like, the gouges teacher. out the eyes of the invisible man. And yeah. that kind of causes his death because of the ceiling yeah. falling on top of him. Yeah. And, um... So she basically killed... Three people. Three of them out of the five that were supposed mm. to be focusing on their prince. Yeah. But perhaps the worst thing for me in that scene is when Cal is standing over the brother and she's snarling about killing him. Oh, yeah. She wants to see him bleed. If only it was Evangeline. If only I could do it myself. Why? Why are you so... You know what? You're right, Ollie. They just need to fuck. They totally do. <laughs> it needs... It, it will never be Korosami, but if they could just be like, oh, oh, I didn't want to be you. I want to be with you. <laughs> I understand now. That's wow, like... we, should, hey, we should hate fuck. And then yeah. date. <laughs> Seriously, it was just my frustrated lust. That's why I hated you so much. That's I've it. never felt this way about a girl before. I assumed it was hate. <laughs> Honestly, that whole thing, like, oh, if only it were Evangeline. It's like, yes, thank you. We get it. You hate uh, women. <laughs> yeah, right? We You're an awful it. person. I think at one point I actually was like, Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I underlined the part about wanting to see him bleed and put, because you're awful. (laughs) (laughs) You know what? I'm fine with her bloodlust, honestly. Like, it's about time she showed some bloodlust for the dudes, right? Her, her, she wants to watch him bleed, but she wants it to be Evangeline. She wants to do it herself. 
Right. That that was the part. As as it always is, that gets me is that it's very specifically gendered hate. Yeah. <laughs> like I hate the women. Even though I should I have just as much reason to hate all of the dudes too. Uh, yeah. if not more. Yeah. Keeping your women's down. Does this book have the most girl hate of anything else reviewed on here? Mariska asks. Uh, I mean, I can't think of anything worse. The only I thing know. that comes close is House of Night, and we haven't done that on here. So, yeah. yeah. No, this is the worst. No, there wasn't really any girl hate in House of Night. What? House oh, Night House. Is... I'm thinking Night House. No, yeah, no. I was going to say, House of Night is like 95% girl hate. <laughs> this is just unrepentant. Out right. of its way, girl hate. Yes, those two things exactly. Every, like it, it does go out of its way to to remind you, hey, women suck. I hate all of them. You should also hate all of them. Girl. Yes. Okay. Only trust the men's. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of want to rewrite this book to make it better. Do it. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> and see what I kind of come up with. You totally should. Although we might have to talk about like some of the fucking. Hunger Games X Men elements here because <laughs> that, that some of this shit is just twee as fuck, man. Oh my god, I know. It's too much. Just like limit it, limit it to only the people you actually are dealing with. Yeah, and like, like pick one. <laughs> pick pick a thing and stick to it. Don't don't like do fifty things. There uh, was a an editor who gave a talk at an event I was at where she commented about put, mixing two genres. People can get behind it and it's good and other people will want to do the same thing. And yeah, my first third, people are like, what? Yeah. The first novel I read, um, I was told, read, uh, the first novel I wrote, I was told was a Pippi Longstocking meets the X-Men. Uh. And I'm never going to show anyone that book, but uh, I can see how easy it is to do those stereotypes when it's your first book, but God, she... Uh, it, Derivative it, is really easy to do uh, on your first story. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. And from what I'm reading, what I read in the acknowledgement, that's what it sounded like. This was the first book ever that she's written. It's, it is, it's very... It, it feels really first book, like, oh, all these cool things are happening, and then this thing is going to happen, and then this thing, and then I'm not going to fucking think about... It has all of that enthusiasm of a first book, mm -hmm. or a first story, let's go with, where it's like you finished it, and it's all exciting, and you're super enthusiastic about it, and there's all of this stuff, and you want to explore the whole goddamn world. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that that's... No, they usually recommend, what, 10,000 hours of writing before you try to get published? Well, you have no idea, Robin, if she was writing beforehand. It didn't sound like it, but you're right. I have no clue, but it did not sound like it in the acknowledgments. I would assume that she'd been writing for a long time. Just, you know, this might have been the first thing that she finished. I don't know. I'm yeah, willing to give her the benefit of the doubt on that one. And just go with this needed some serious beta reading. Yeah, it it really like you guys were saying, it's just it's so first draft. Yeah. With editing. Yeah. There's not any spelling errors, which is great. Right. They they went through it for typos and they were like, This is good. We'll go with this. <laughs> uh are we ready for the one part in the arena that I hated the most? Or is um, there something else we needed to discuss? Well, I want to comment just on how the arena was full and then it was impossibly empty. Yeah, and she didn't notice that. Uh -huh. There was no get out of here, there was no shouting, there was no yeah. protesting. Yeah, and then of course the, mo the mother disappeared too at that time as well. Right, which, as we commented earlier, would have made any bit of sense for her to still be there. <laughs> but, like, a fight like that that was described, it couldn't have been more than, like, 45 seconds. 
Right. And and for all the people, like, the teeming arena to just be empty because she got her powers back. <laughs> yeah. And I'm curious as to what they explained to them why they had to leave because it had to be suspicious that they're going, oh, we have to leave now, right in the middle of this execution? Yeah. Why? We're not going to see any fallout on that. I had gotten the impression that they left in a bit of a panic. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, she was she was calling down a big lightning storm. So, Out of I, I could see them being, like, evacuated for their own safety. But for her to but, just look up and be like, what? But then the king is still in there, and there's no air this time, so... Oh, well, I think we've established that that only matters when it matters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was also a moment where she comments about, like, the little girl I am. <sighs> and I just wanted to snap her. <laughs> Yep, just just keep uh keep internalizing that that misogyny, girl. That's what uh-huh. you need. <laughs> like the little girl I am, I'm just gonna stand here and expect everyone to shoot me. A man would be doing something so different. <laughs> Maybe I'll see my family soon. Was <laughs> <It's not Gina. laughs> <laughs> I just I love too that she berates herself for that kind of thing, and then again, oh Cal, I'm so sorry. You can't be held responsible for any decisions right. that you made. It's but, all me. Oh, me. I'm this terrible girl who, you know, wants yeah, revolution. God. Damn my ovaries. Girl, <laughs> hey, even to the main protagonist, hates herself, so. Ah. To the extreme. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, you know, in retrospect, uh, I don't know if we officially reviewed it here, but Goddess Test might be on par with this. In terms of girl hate. Yeah. Uh, once you get to the whole thing, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we did review it on here, but that one was... I don't cool. think we have. I haven't read it. Oh, no. I think that was just Senna and I. I did it for uh-huh. a magazine. Yeah. That, that was special. Yeah. Yeah, it was. That was that was one of those things where you just sort of push the curtain aside and you're like, wow, you really think fucked up things. <laughs> it's like, uh... Why are you fucking your family, essentially? Oh, God. And they're making you get married and put babies in you. What is going on? Oh, it, so it has up. a penis. It is more important than you. Remember, I, I know we're going off on a tangent, but I, I was just thinking about this yesterday, Ollie. Remember when they had the thousands-year-old goddess crawl up into her daddy's lap and just cry? I like forgot that girl? part. Thanks. Thanks. You're welcome. I was just yeah. thinking about that. I'm like, wow. Aphrodite just crawls into Zeus's lap and is like, Daddy, Daddy, help me. Wah. I'm a little girl, even though we're probably just about the same age. Yeah. I totally forgot about that part. Oh, oh my god. Daddy poor Hera, me. everyone just treats her like shit. Right? Oh, god, that fucking book. Okay, I'm No, sorry. that's a lot of girl hate there, I would say. Yeah. That, that book is, is all about girl hate without any... Any stopping. No, that's like, that's, and there's some intense self loathing there with the protagonist, too. Oh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So if you want more girl A, check that out. Yeah, <laughs> Goddess Test. A plus, man. All right, anyway. so what's the, what's the worst thing? Go ahead. In the arena. Uh, the worst thing for me was the, the Des Ex Machina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't Dave's. been able to say that all day. Dave? Dave? Dave's ex Machina. This ex Machina. Yeah, I've been trying to say it all day today. Yeah, that was my... F- Deus. Ugh. I'm like, everyone's Deus. supposed to be dead. Mm-hmm. No, this is- no. Everyone was not supposed to be dead. The re- she just kept re- saying it. Yeah, yeah. they're dead. She they're dead. Trying to convince no, they're not dead. They dead. Yeah, because right? you don't see them fucking die. Yeah. <laughs> Do not believe. No. They survive this. They have to have tons and tons of injuries, tons of people dying. They have to recoup their resources. They have no way of knowing where they're putting mare or cow. 
in the building to rescue them, but somehow they managed to, at the perfect moment, grab her and shove her down in the river and save her life. Yeah. Yeah. My question was, she was coming to that point where she's like, oh, we can we can face the river and the pipes, or we can face the firing squad. And I'm like, uh, river pipes. pipes. Never. Yeah. Jump. What the fuck? Why are you not? <laughs> where it's like, nothing but pipes and plumbing. And I'm like, and tunnels. <laughs> and, and no people shooting at you. Uh-huh. You can run through those things. Yeah. But no. <laughs> I was like, is there an invisible wall? Like, is there something you're not telling me here? <laughs> Get in the options... fucking tunnel, go! <laughs> one of these options is a lot better than the other one. Absolute death or possible death. Right, exactly. Yeah. But, you know, she's a little girl, so what could she be expecting? <laughs> it's like she could go without Cal. I know, oh, God, oh fuck God. Cal, right? Just fucking jump. <laughs> yeah. Epilogue. Epilogue. Hey, guess who wasn't dead? Oh my god, he's fucking Nightcrawler. <laughs> I thought he was Quicksilver for a minute there, because she, uh... she described it weird. Like, he's across the sea, and now he's not. I was like, is he running really fast? No, nah, I think going? he's Nightcrawler. Yeah, no, she said he, he was he's, teleporting. Yeah, once she, I had the same thought. I'm thinking, man, he must run like Flash, and then he's like, oh, she's He's teleporting. I'm like, oh, Nightcrawler. Okay, we're good. Right. <laughs> so we've got Farley as Xavier, her as Magneto, uh, her brother as Nightcrawler. I guess she's Storm now, isn't she? Oh, my God. Might be, possibly, yeah. Doesn't lightning happen from, like, the ground up? I don't know. Robin, I it's chemicals. Factor. I think it's chemicals in the air that rub together in the sky, but I'm not 100% sure. It's been a while since I've looked that up. Okay, someone should find that. It down. can be directed from the, from the ground, I think, but I think it's created in the sky. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. She's Storm. Now. Mm-hmm. Is she going to turn into Wolverine or Rogue? Is she supposed to be Rogue? Doesn't she what? have white in her hair? She did. Mm, well, she just had that that faded gray. That gray stuff. It doesn't exist. Took all the ugly out, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure they cut it. it. They cut it? it. They cut it. it. They cut you. Yeah, so she wakes up on her brother's lap because men, in, men in everywhere. Red Railroad. Men, she's literally rolling in men. Oh, yeah, surrounded by them. She doesn't also... Okay. There was um there was a book that I was reading um it was the the Moon series the Life as We Knew It um, mm -hmm. nothing bad ever happened to the protagonist ultimately like everything worked out even her cat survives nice yeah where I'm like yay the cat but <laughs> meanwhile I'm like all of this bad shit is happening to so many other people but not you you're special <laughs> and I felt the same way with Mare when Shade is there. And it's just like, oh, yeah, your your family is touched by you are the protagonist and nothing yeah. bad can happen to them. Yeah, it was like, where's mom and dad? They're waiting for us. They're fine. I would have really loved to, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I would have been interested Sorry, to see her family being dragged into the arena going, here's the traitor's family. This is what happens to when you're a traitor and they execute them right there. Or even there. just not knowing where they were would have been like... Better than, they're fine and waiting for us with candy and strawberries. <laughs> they're free now. They're so happy. They're so proud of you. Yeah. Um, no, uh, so, I, uh, I hated that ending. <laughs> she's, she's, she is protagonist touched. All of her men stay safe. Mm -hmm. And her family's fine. Yep. yep, and she has barely even been hurt. Yeah. And throughout most of the book, she thinks, like, oh, what would they do to my family if this fails, like, what, twice? Why didn't they have her family locked up somewhere, like, 
You as mean, a bargaining chip? Yeah, like, make them servants in some random high house's home. Yeah, that was one of my first questions. I'm like, hey, you know, this person's got that weird silver power, but they've got that red blood, but, you know, there can't be right. possibly and that they knew, in their families. They knew about her brother. They yeah. knew her brother had it. So as soon as she had it, they should have been like, eh, let's get them all in. Yeah, seriously. I Like, the fact that um, that they weren't looking into the family members of the, the people who were able to do stuff, who were red, mm-hmm. is, I mean, again, just completely unbelievable. But, you know, Julian is the only one who could possibly think to look at their genetic material. Ugh. Yeah, he's the only one who looks over the records. Right. Because that's not the first fucking thing you would do. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then there's Cal. Yep. Who won't even let her say Maven's name, except that then she says it again. Yeah. <laughs> and then they're they're united in their your mutual hatred of, of Maven. The end. Yeah. What a great and ending. If this was the only book. What? Like, this does not stand alone at all. Mm. Taking such a risk. I mean, not if they, not if they contract you for a, a fucking yes. trilogy, man. I mean, I really feel like it, there's a possibility that this could have been, like. The, the climax was at the ball kind of thing, and they kind of pushed book two into this. Like, yeah, I can see that. It, it, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they've reworked this into like more of a series arc. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> F minus minus. Yeah, not not great. Pretty terrible. I do appreciate that they basically dropped that whole rebellion is bad thing by the end, sort of. Mm-hmm. Or at least weren't rubbing our face in it. Yeah, I would go with not rubbing our faces in it. I'm, sh- I'm sure it'll come up later in the trilogy since it was so heavily emphasized. Yeah, in the beginning. They really... Oh, excuse me. They really gave us the, that impression with that ending that it's going to be kind of a vengeance thing now. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure that'll come up. Yeah. Right, like if it becomes just personal. Yeah. What? Yeah. This is going to be like one of those things where you're just like, no, you you can't, you just want to kill him because he made you kill your father, which is actually a really legitimate reason to kill somebody. But <laughs> it's like you're not you're not doing it for the political good. We If we just oh my talk. God. You're doing it because you want to kill him and get revenge, and revenge is bad, even though in this case, again, they've done really terrible things and kind of deserve it. Right. What did you think of the, oh, now they have to see my red blood and my powers? (sighs) Like, did anybody care, though? I still don't see what the big deal is. (laughs) Why does that matter? Because, I, I mean, I understand that in that it, it undermines the Silver's, like, self-superiority thing that they have going on. So that's, I mean, that's fine. But did anybody really think that that he would not have a way to explain that? I mean, it's just, it's so, like, whatever. It's another one of their bad plans when it comes to her abilities. Well, at the very end, she's going, you have to admit, I am now, you can see my power, you can see my red blood. Oh, they turned off the cameras, but it's too late. My image has already been shown on TV right. screens because, all over the world. Because she's the Red Queen. She's the Mockingjay now. Yeah. She's well, the symbol of the rebellion. Uh, because she's a red with powers who stood up to silvers. Uh, I mean, that's, that's basically it, right? Yeah, I, I think that's that's what they'll say in the future. Uh-huh. I was telling you, man. 100% Hunger Games fanfic. Yep. That's my theory. 
If only there were like 13 houses or something. Yeah. <laughs> no, we all Instead know how many houses. Hundreds. Hundreds, <sighs> hundreds, hundreds of houses. Of that she somehow knows by the end enough yeah. to just rattle them off, even the though it's only... man. Yeah. It's like you know, the, you know, the author just wants uh, a way to to explain their world to you, so Mare knows everything now. It's cool. when convenient. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. When convenient. Yeah. Well, you know, the next book, even though Maven knows exactly that the radiation doesn't work, he's going to completely forget that for the second one. Actually, we'll need to come up with a plan, won't we? What oh. is the next book called? Queen of... Mm, what's it called? Hold on. I want to I wanna look up what the next book is about. I'm I curious. I think there are also um, in-between shorts or something. Yeah. 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 How are things going on in the chat? Because I haven't been able to be in there because I'm on the phone. Uh, it's, it's been mostly quiet. Just Soul popped in a few Hi, minutes Soul. ago. Um, so this is what we get when we let Santa choose a book based on the cover. You can keep <laughs> banging that drum, Rob. <laughs> it's not going to get you anywhere. So the next one is called Glass Sword. Okay. Uh, Mare Barrow's blood is red, the color of common folk. But her silver ability, the power to control lightning, has turned her into a weapon that the royal court tries to control. The crown calls her an impossibility, a fake, but as she makes her escape from Maven, the prince, the friend who betrayed her, Mare uncovers something startling. She's not the only one of her kind. She she discovered this mid this book. Why are you... Yeah. Anyway. Pursued by Maven, now a vindictive king. Wow, this is spoiler town, man. Uh, Mare sets out to find and recruit other red and silver fighters to join the struggle against her oppressors. Red and silver being hyphenated, apparently now the term for reds with powers. Um, but Mare finds herself on a deadly path at risk of becoming exactly the kind of monster she's trying to defeat. Oh my fucking god. She's there always done that. No, but there's that, that fucking that di dichotomy, like, oh, you're going to become the people that you're trying to defeat, even though the people you're trying to defeat are literally your oppressors. Yeah. But whatever. Well, Will she shatter under the weight of the lives that are the cost of rebellion? They're, yeah, yeah, they're definitely sticking with that. Mm. Uh, or have treachery and betrayal hardened her forever? Yeah, uh, the electrifying next installment in the Red Queen series. <laughs> did you see what they did there? It's funny. I did not until you pointed it out. Thanks. Uh -huh. um, When's it due out? Uh, February 9th of next year. Anyway. Uh, Man, that's a fast turnaround. Not really. This They're one. probably all prepped. Yeah, I mean, this one came out like a few months ago. Anyway, the electrifying next installment in the Red Queen series escalates the struggle between the growing rebel army and the blood-segregated world they've always known and pits Mare against the darkness of her own heart. So, yeah, I mean, I, we, we know where that's fucking going, don't we? Yeah, she's going to have to fight Evangeline. <laughs> fight, not fuck, unfortunately. Uh-huh, yeah. Hate sex. <laughs> Ollie ships it. I totally do, because maybe then she'd chill the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. She just she just discovers that her general hatred for women was the exact opposite. Yeah. She wants to woo them. Uh, Cuddle. Yep. <laughs> she wants to watch Netflix. <laughs> Once again, uh, our book is better than the actual book. <laughs> yeah, I think we re wrote the entire book fairly consistently. <laughs> I, I think that's kind of what we do, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, this sucks. This is how it could be better. Usually lesbians. Lesbian! <laughs> or at least bisexual. Mm-hmm. Yep. So yeah, that was Red Queen. Everybody, Yay. everybody's happy. 
Alright, do we know what we're doing next? Uh, I don't know. Well, I know we were talking about the book, but I think we were talking about doing something in between. Yeah, um, it is September, which means time to read creepy stuff. I mean, I could, I could theoretically read something else in between, but I'm going to try and do the book a week thing again, so. Oh, wow. But why? Is somebody saying something else? Carry on. Nope. Well, I mean, we did have Ollie's idea of choosing between two dishes. <laughs> the lesser of two dishes. The lesser of two dish dishes. <laughs> we could definitely do something like that. Uh, we also have, you know, the Divergent movies. Just throwing that out there. Which one? The, the Divergent movies. Yeah. Robin's like... I have to watch them again because they were so bad that I don't really remember them. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, I'm sure we, we should put something. it out to our audience and see what they want us to do. And yeah, that's true. You guys uh, let us know what you would like us to... Do and or talk about. Yeah. I know yeah. that people, the book ones are fun, and that it's easier to listen along <laughs> to ones that are not about a book. Mhm. Mm but you get less interaction on those ones. Mm, this is true. Like I know the the Alpha Bitches one is like the one that's been listened to the most, but I think it has, like, no comments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, if you guys comment, let us know what sort of things we should be doing. Then we could do more stuff that you like and less stuff that you don't like. Exactly that. Or, or maybe the exact same amount, but at least we'll know. <laughs> at least we'll know that no one's paying attention. <laughs> yes. We'll know when we're being indulgent. Uh, and we can regulate accordingly. Or not. You know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, you guys let us know and thank you to everybody who showed up for the chats. It was super fun. Mariska, Soul, um, I think Melina from last week, Maverinthia, Maverinthia, all the people who keep showing up to chitty chat with us yeah. about terrible books. We appreciate your presence. Super fun. Super fun. And I was glad to be able to join in on this. Yes, I'm always happy to have Ollie back. Yay. I think the, like, we have to be on at a certain time and it's live also mm -hmm. has been good in that way. It, it, it helps you get out of bed. You're like, oh, I guess I gotta go. There are, like, people who will actually be there. Yeah, it's like, oh, I've gotta, like, make sure I'm home. I'm gonna set up my stuff. <laughs> I'm bad. That kind of thing. Hmm. <laughs> Perpetually. <laughs> yep. Thanks, everyone. It was fun. It Bitches. is fun. <laughs> Bitches. Alright, so uh, was there anything anybody else needed? Are we good to go? Let's not read the second one. Okay. I, yeah, you know what? I don't need that. Also, the cover's not as pretty, so whatever. There we go. Bam. Chosen. Done with this shit. <laughs> Alright. Well then, good night, ladies. Good night. Good night. Thanks for hanging out, guys. <laughs>